It's like, pe like people try to make arguments. Like they, they come to me and they just say like, not, not, not test the the uh, the brain saw isn't that bad. It's just gimmicky. There's been gimmicky blasters before. Think about some of the original end strike guns with like the the air tanks and stuff where you pump it up a million times. One trigger pull for one shot. Takes like 20 minutes for one shot. Yeah. The, the brain saw's not that bad. It's just, a, it looks so cool, right? It looks cool. It's a good cosplay piece. And, and it has a, a fun gimmick on the front, right? You're overreacting. It's not that bad. Literally the worst blaster I have ever ever had the displeasure of owning in my collection right up there next to the Alpha Strike Mantis. The, the worst possible experience imaginable. <sighs> it's been a very long time since I've used one of these. And honestly, I never thought I would have another one of these in my collection again because... This is the worst blaster I have ever used in my life. There are a few reasons why I say that. Not just because the blaster is just mediocre and costed $50, similar to how people perceive the Ultra 1, but mainly because I passed the sledge fire to get one of these the first time. And that made me realize just how stupid I was. I had an undying hatred for this blaster for the longest time. I actually destroyed my last one and then threw it away. And I kind of feel bad about that because, well, blaster's pretty hard to find nowadays. This turned up at the thrift store and honestly, figured I might as well give it a chance. So we're doing the brain saw today. A blaster I'm going to do everything in my power to be objective about even though I really don't like it. And after I'm finished with this review, I'm gonna open it and make it something that I'm actually proud to own. First though, a bit of background as to what this blaster is. This is, obviously you can tell by looking at it, it is like a big chainsaw looking thing with an eight dart smart AR blaster attached to it in the same style as a Nerf Rough Cut or a Nerf Warden. The only difference being that this one only shoots one dart at a time, which was the first big letdown when I got this thing, but honestly, it didn't matter. It's not the end of the world. The brain saw is a really cool idea, and from this angle, a very cool looking blaster, even though I've been hiding the other side from you. But on that note, let's start with the actual design. This thing looks absolutely amazing. Look at this. Look at all these details. Look at how everything is just so perfectly orchestrated, like with this big futuristic looking rustic chainsaw thing on it. Oh. This is the worst case of lack of details on the other side that I've ever seen. I know Nerf usually doesn't put as many details on the other side, but holy dingus, big brick of green plastic, big brick of orange plastic. Now, there are some details engraved into the plastic, but not nearly as many as on the other side, which just makes me wonder why on earth they did this. Because you look at it from this side, that looks absolutely ridiculous, especially if you were looking at this side before, the other side looks so dumb. Why did Hasbro do that? They, 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 have a, they have a tactical rail. Why couldn't they at least copy that? It's not even symmetrical. The chainsaw is off to the side, even though that kind of makes sense because that's kind of the way that real chainsaws work, but still, it, it was almost a super good design, and then they just completely cacked it. What about the ergonomics? So it's got a main grip and it's got two foregrips. It's got the functional foregrip and the aesthetic foregrip. Let's start with the main grip first, though. It's pretty good. It's not that big, but it is very smooth and comfortable on your hand. It is a very nice grip to hold on to. I really like the way that this blaster holds on your main hand. And on that note, the trigger pull is very nice. It feels a lot like the rough cut, but a little bit more shrunken down, so it fits my hand a little bit better than the rough cut did. 
As for the aesthetic foregrip, it's big and it's comfortable. It doesn't do anything, but it's made to make it look like a chainsaw. And the last blaster that I had, well, the foregrip had a tendency to come flying off if you were to try and swing this thing around a lot, which just was ridiculous and made it kind of unusable. This one I haven't had that problem with, so that's pretty good. And then the functional foregrip. So it's a, a pump grip. You notice an issue here? You notice an issue? It's real cramped. It does not feel very good to hold on to this. And I, I genuinely mean that. I do not like the way that this foregrip feels. It is tight and cramping and painful and uncomfortable. And honestly, if there's one mod that I really want to do to this blaster, it's making this foregrip bigger and wrap up around the sides of the blaster so I'd actually be able to hold it comfortably. In the state that it's in now, it is one of the most uncomfortable foregrips ever, right up there next to all of the T-Pole blasters and the rival Hades. Not quite as bad as the Hades, but it really isn't good. But how does this blaster work? Well, it is an 8-dart front-loading Smart AR blaster. So you load in 8 darts, I loaded the other side already, and then it is single shot, or it has slam fire. And honestly, that's pretty cool. A blaster that looks like the chainsaw, but has an 8-dart capacity, 8 shots, and slam fire. So you know how Smart AR blasters usually have a tendency to die off after the first few shots? This is the worst case of Smart AR die-off I have ever seen. It's actually laughable to look at how bad the last two or three shots perform when you're shooting them, especially if you're slam firing. The last two shots actually took almost a full second to make it to the target, which, by the way, stands right there. That is historical, and now I need to fix this camera. But what about the actual rotation gimmick up here? So here's the thing. The ripcord on this blaster is missing. There's supposed to be a two-handed T-pull ripcord thing that you pull back, and it connects to a mechanism that connects to the cylinder, making it rotate really fast and make a sort of chainsaw kind of static noise, like something that you would make with like a, a rotating ratcheting system, and it rotates the front of it for a second or two. It's okay. But it's incredibly stupid, especially because you have to take either your main hand or your off hand off of the grips to come up and pull the ripcord back when it offers no tactical advantage in a play aspect or in a, f a functional aspect. On a real chainsaw, you'd pull it back and then hold on to this and usually hold down a trigger or something to make the chainsaw spin. But on this one, you would have to pull it back, which makes it spin for a second, and then it stops, so by the time your hand goes back into position, the chainsaw itself is not moving anymore. And I want to address a really big issue this has that honestly makes it kind of unusable no matter what you're doing with it. So you can see that the front of this chainsaw is made out of foam, right? This whole thing is a big foam disc. Plastic. Plastic. Oh yeah. That has caused many, many issues. Because if you actually try to chainsaw somebody with this, you know, what you're supposed to do instead of tactically stabbing them with the, with the tip, it is plastic. It's hard plastic. It's sharp plastic. It is pointy to look like the chainsaw blades, and it really hurts. Ow! Even just hitting my arm softly like that genuinely hurts a lot because it's made of plastic. They aren't made of foam. Even if this was just like a bit, like a little piece of foam right here and a little piece of foam up there, I would have no complaints right here. I would say, that's cool. That's fine but they're made of plastic, and it's actually dangerous. And if you actually use this thing like a chainsaw, you're going to risk hurting somebody. I so desperately want y'all to see the Smart AR die off, so I'm gonna do single shot eight darts, and then I'm going to do slam fire eight darts. Pretty good. Oh. Oh no. Oh my god. <laughs> And now slam fire, so you get to watch that wonderful performance again. And what dart farted out because smart ARs just Oh, Hasbro, oh, why? So yeah, and the performance department is not really there either. It's kind of a mess in every single department that you look at it at. Do you want to know why I hated this blaster so much? $50. 50 bucks. 
50. Retail for this was 50 United States dollars. That's expensive. That's really expensive. You want to know what was what costed the same amount of money and is better in every single way? Azura Rage Fire, which is sitting right over there. The Long Shot, which is sitting right up here. The Pharaoh, which is sitting right up here. The Dart Zone Dictator. The Elite 2.0 Double Punch. The Double Punch is $35. This is more expensive than the Double Punch. And even back when this blaster was first released, you could get the Sledge Fire. As I said, I walked by the Sledge Fire to get these the, the Zombie Strike Brain Saw. And that, that killed me emotionally when I realized that the sledge fire had become a super hard blaster to get and I was sitting here looking like an idiot holding my brain saw. I will say, the aesthetic and concept for a chainsaw shotgun is the coolest thing imaginable. But this was not done well. This blaster's concept was not executed correctly. The blaster looks terrible from one side, has mediocre, worse than end strike performance out of half of the barrels, with mid tier subpar elite performance out of the first four barrels, a dysfunctional ripcord style rotating gimmick that can actually spin the wrong way because I'm pretty sure that whole mechanism is broken, a terrible pump grip which just does not feel right to put your hand on, and at a premium that rivaled way better blasters in every single way. Now while I still don't like the brain saw, I won't say that it is the worst blaster in my collection anymore. That does not make it good. This blaster is not good. You should not buy it for $50 retail and you should not buy it for anything that is above that that people are selling it for on eBay. It is not worth that money at all. However, I do really like the concept. But I, I need to modify this. This blaster has to be modified to be worth buying. And it starts with changing these into foam. This, this should not have happened in the first place. This should be illegal. But with that said, there is still an Amazon listing for this, even though you can't get them directly from Amazon. There is still a link that I can paste in the description below. Again, you really shouldn't. If you really want one of these, you should probably just hope that you'll find one at a thrift store like I did. But that's basically all. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.